What's up everybody? Today's gonna be a quick lesson. Uh, one more lick that I'm tired of faking and I wanna do for real. It's the end of the Crazy Train solo. So today we'll mark the end of two things. First of all, me playing the end of it wrong, hopefully. And then uh, my headphones actually just broke as I was putting them on. So it'll be the last time you see these things. Good thing Christmas is coming up. So I'll just tuck this in here. Hopefully I won't electrocute myself somehow. Okay, so this is a lick I've been doing wrong my entire life. I'll show you what I used to do, okay? So we get to the very end of the solo. I would do something like that. I would just make up some pentatonic lick and hope for the best. Hope nobody was really paying attention. And I always knew I was doing it wrong. And listening to live versions, trying to watch his fingers, didn't really help because he changes things up all the time when he solos live. So Randy's good at doing that. He's just an artist, you know, always changing things up. So I went back to the original recording and I slowed it down half speed. And here's what I came up with. It's actually pretty playable. The end is a little bit weird and there's two ways to do it that I can think of. Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know. But up until now, this is the most accurate I've ever played this, okay? So we're going to go to the 6th string, 11th fret. And we're going to try to get used to this 1-2-4 idea with our fingers. If you don't like stretching with your pinky, you can use your ring finger, that's fine. But I think pinky works a little better in this case. We're going to go 6th string, 11, 12, 14. I'll just say the frets right now. And then we're going to pick the next string the same. So we're going to pick all six notes. <laughs> Now we get to the fourth string, we're going to do the same frets, but we're going to hammer those on. So we get more of a legato. So let's put those first nine notes together. Okay, get really smooth at that. The good news is we keep the shape, but we just move up two frets. So now we're going to go 13, 14, 16 on the fourth string, and we're going to do the legato again onto the next string as well. So if you want a good practice, just go back and forth between those two strings. It's always good to practice hammer-ons like that. Okay, let's put all those together so far. One tab book that I read said it was this big stretch like this, and it made me totally want to give up. But uh, hopefully I can bring you a better way to play it today, okay? Already it's way more playable than a lot of things I've played. Okay, now the part that you could do two different ways, okay? The part that I think he does is if you go to the second string, 14th fret, and we hammer on the 17th fret, followed by the 14th fret of the first string. This is the only part that really gets me tangled up right now. Okay, it seems like an easy thing, but up to speed, that can be kind of tricky. So we have 14th fret, 17th fret, hammer on, followed by the F sharp, the 14th fret of the first string. Then we come back to the second string, 17th fret, and we slide up to the 19th fret. Now we finish quick, okay? We go right to the first string, 17th fret, A. Then we play the 19th fret, B, and we just start bending. We do the two big bends followed by the vibrato. So the ending's a little choppy, but let's put it together, okay? From the 14th fret. Notice, as soon as I hit the A note, as I'm playing the B, I'm starting to bend it right away. The first time I did it, I actually played the B, and then I bent it. It's actually just right to the bend, okay? B for bend. Okay, let's go ahead and put all of that together really slow. I have the tab up on the screen so you guys can follow along. Here we go. The alternate version that you could try, I did this at first, is instead of going 14th fret to 17th fret to the 14th fret of the next string, you just slide right up to the 19th fret of the second string instead, and you get this. But upon listening to it, it doesn't sound like it's all of those hammer-ons like that. It doesn't sound like this. It sounds more like this. Okay, so let's put this together one last time. I'm going to do it my way. Hopefully it's the right way. One, two, three, four. 
One thing I'm noticing that's helping me a lot at the end is picking a certain way. So as soon as I go 14th fret to 17th fret, I upstroke the F sharp, the first string. That way you're ready for the downstroke for the slide right afterwards. Okay, don't do what I did before. I tried to downpick the first two and then I had to do some funky upstroke on the second string. It just felt weird. So, okay, let's do it at medium speed now. Okay, that's where I'm at with it right now. My goal is to practice this a million times. Once again, do the go to bed trick where you practice right before bed and then right when you wake up and for some reason your brain just figures it out. It's like a weird practice hack. Um, let's see if I can get it a little faster before I let you go and then uh, I'll just be happy that I'm finally playing it closer to what it actually is. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Of course, the iconic riff at the end, you got to go back to it. Okay, so one of the first riffs I ever learned, and I feel like I finally have the solo very, very close, if not what he did, hopefully. Thanks for watching, everybody. Once again, you're helping me resurrect my demons, where I know I'm just faking certain things, but uh, hopefully I'm making up for it and uh, getting my karma back on track. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks.